Welcome back to the channel, my name is Wajaha and today we are talking about oracles again. Now for those of you who have been following me for a while, I've talked about oracles many times on the channel. We've talked about Chainlink, we've talked about API 3, and we've talked about various other oracles as well uh, on the channel but also on my Twitter page as well. And today what I wanted to do is talk about push versus pull oracles. We're going to learn a little bit today, it's going to be a more of an educational type of video. Um, so if you like this sort of stuff, sit back, relax, and enjoy this one. We're going to also have a little bit of focus on API 3. You do have a push oracle. Uh, and um, yeah, just sit back, relax, and uh, even if you don't know anything about oracles, hopefully today you can learn something. Um, so the first thing that we want to appreciate is smart contracts, which are the power of a lot of these blockchains like Ethereum, uh, cannot actually talk to the outside world. Uh, and I've got a picture here. This is uh, something many of you might be familiar with. This is a lending and borrowing market called Aave. Uh, and on Aave, what you can do is you can lend a variety of assets, whether it's ETH, stable coins, wrapped Bitcoin, you can borrow against them as well. That's why you see these different interest rates. But the question is, how on earth does Aave know, or this smart contract know the prices of these assets that you're lending and borrowing? Remember, this is quite important because if you're taking out loans, you could get liquidated, etc. How does it know the price? Well, the price is constantly changing. It's uh, not something that's stable. So how does it get this information? Well, it gets it via an oracle. Uh, and that's because oracles basically connect real world data to a blockchain or two smart contracts. Um, and... Um, I say, I say two smart contracts, they connect them to a blockchain so that smart contracts like Aave can use them. And there's lots of examples of this, for example, data feeds, the prices, the stablecoin pegs, your NFT floor prices, a lot of these stuff uh, are, are, are done via oracles. And there's many different types of oracles that we, that we know of. I think many of you may be familiar with the likes of Chainlink, API3, uh, but also various other ones as well. Um, and there's two main kind of architectures for these oracles in terms of how they work. Yeah, obviously, it all starts with the data source and, and you need somewhere that will obviously get this data for you, whether it's a centralized exchange or whether it's somewhere else at all. There needs to be some place where the data is actually coming from. Now, with push-based oracles, what happens is, is that um, this is fetched to the oracle network uh, and then this is delivered on-chain to a smart contract. Once this is on the blockchain, various different apps and users can basically get this information. Usually it's the apps that fetch this information and then the users can interact with those apps um, just like you can on Aave. Uh, Pull-based oracles are another type of oracle uh, and there are some oracle providers that do have this mechanism uh, and it pretty much works the same way. So you've got the data source uh, which is fetched to by the oracle network. However, there's a big difference here and this is where the difference comes. In push-based oracles, the oracle network delivers it directly on-chain. Here, it's the users that need to fetch this information when they need it, and then they can deliver and interact with the applications that way. And there's a big difference here, uh, because th this really changes the user experience of the user. Over here, the user didn't have to do anything whatsoever. The dApps do the work, uh, and the user can just interact directly with the dApp. The DAP also doesn't have to pay gas fees or anything like that. It's basically available on chain already. Whereas over here, the user and the DAPs do have to do that. Uh, and, and that is uh, some caveats that we'll talk about shortly. So with the push model, uh, updates uh, to the data are at predefined intervals, which are known as triggers. Whereas with the pull, pull model, uh, Oracle reports are continuously generated off chain, uh, but then they're made available for users and DAPs to pull on chain when required. Um, and uh, API3 and Chainlink currently offer uh, the push model uh, and essentially they publish their the data directly to these blockchains, whether it's Ethereum, Polygon, ZK, EVM, Arbitrum, uh, and then the apps like Aave can basically just interact with these smart contracts and obviously use them within the app so that the users can use Aave. Now, as I mentioned, pull-based oracles, they're not always the best because number one, you have to rely on various different bridges, but number two, uh, these applications often have to run their own price service and this can be a little bit complicated for their own architecture. DApps don't really want to do this. They just want to read the data, make it as simple as possible. They don't have the infrastructure and they don't want to make it more complicated for the users. They don't want a more complicated experience. They don't want increased gas fees 
And so that's why I think sometimes pull based oracles are not always the best. Of course, this isn't always the case, but I think uh, in the majority of cases, especially when it comes to DeFi, especially if you're using an application like Aave, it really just doesn't make sense to have a pull based oracle. So what are API 3 doing? Well, API 3 have got a push based oracle, but they haven't just got a push based oracle. They've got what's known as a first party oracle. Uh, and this is what helps to differentiate it from the likes of Chainlink. First party oracles are oracles that are actually operated by the data source provider themselves. So you can see here in the push based oracle, the data source providers themselves will publish this oracle directly on chain. It's very different to how Chainlink offers their oracles, which you can see in this picture here. And there's a number of reasons why, because with Chainlink, Chainlink have these third parties, these middlemen, uh, and uh, it's not always the best idea to do this. That's because there's a number of issues with this. You've got increased attack vectors. Um, you obviously have to expose data to a third party that can result in confidential information being exposed. When there's a middleman, there's always a middleman tax. So it costs a lot more. Uh, there is an issue with decentralization. There becomes a bottleneck eventually. Increased costs, as we just mentioned. We have to also double check, you know, are these reliable sources as well? Because we're using third parties. And the reputation of these also plays a big role. So first party, you're basically getting rid of the middleman. Less fees. It's better, more decentralized, more secure, more confidential. It's better, right? Uh, and that's pretty much what API 3 are doing. And, and they do this by uh, this uh, uh, software called Airnode. I say software, this instrument called Airnode, uh, which basically any application can use. It's easy to use, open source, serverless, set and forget philosophy. Um, and uh, any, any kind of data owner can use this to basically post their data on chain. Um, and uh, here you can just see some of the things that we've just talked about comparing uh, the first party oracles to the third party oracles like we have today with the likes of Chainlink. Um, now, um, API 3 have recently just announced uh, this new product called Managed uh, DAPIs um, and decentralized APIs are on-chain data fees on-chain data feed, sorry, sourced from off-chain first-party oracles owned and operated by the API providers themselves. Um, and we've had uh, these around for a while now, but what we didn't have was the managed DAPIs. Uh, and these have officially launched and these will uh, hopefully generate uh, some revenue as well. Uh, API 3 will be able to manage these for various different protocols who want to partner up with API 3. Uh, and you can see already 120 plus data feeds, 11 different networks, zero middlemen, straight from the source. That's what you want from your Oracle, don't you? Um, and uh, the question is now really, how can API 3 grow? Well, I think part of the growth is going to come from layer twos. We've seen numerous layer twos coming out, uh, especially this year with the likes of Arbitrum, Optimism, ZK Sync, uh, Polygon, ZK EVM, StarkNet. We've got many, many more coming. There's literally 50 plus uh, layer two networks coming. Uh, and obviously each of these different blockchains needs things like price feeds. Um, if you're going to create lending markets, if you're going to create exchanges, perps, options, all these different financial, uh, financial products, you need price feeds. And, and this is pretty much the market that I think API 3 can really tackle. What they're doing at the moment is they're working very closely with Polygon ZK EVM. There's a number of different protocols that have actually, uh, a number of different uh, dApps that have actually um, worked together uh, with API 3. Uh, I think um, QuickSwap is one of them, but there are a few others as well. Uh, and I think that is the area where they need to focus. And if they continue to do that, I don't see why they're not going to uh, grow. There's a, there's a market there to capture for sure. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Uh, we've covered Pretty much the main thing was uh, the, the push Oracle model versus the pull Oracle model. But we also touched upon uh, managed uh, DAPIs, uh, which have recently come out and, and basically what API 3 is working on at the moment. So I hope that uh, you enjoyed this video. hope you learned something today. If you want to learn more about API 3, then go and watch the deep dive. I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, follow me on Twitter, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll be back with plenty more content in the near future.